Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next stage, and that's going to be chipping up the paint. So just a quick review here. We've got the metallic undercoat, which is done in the Vallejo Black Metallic, Vallejo Model Air Black. Um, and then we got a layer of dull coat. And then on top of that, we got our final color, which is a base of corn red and a highlight of Mephiston red. So what we're going to do here, and underneath the paint is, of course, the hairspray. So how, if you're not familiar with the hairspray, let's go over it real quick. Basically, um, acrylic paint is porous. So what's going to happen is we're going to soak the paint in water. The water is going to soak through the paint and soften up the hairspray, um, allowing us to easily remove the covering paint. So I'm going to start here with the front. So I just got a dish with some water in it and your basic soft brush. And we're just going to cover the paint with water. And depending on how much, how thick the paint is, the times for the paint to soak, the water to soak through the paint is going to vary. Um, I've got four layers of brushed on uh, Citadel paint, so the, this might actually take a while. And if you take too long, it's going to have, it's going to spend some time drying before um, you get to it. So you don't want to do a whole lot at once. You just want to get on there pretty thick though, so it will actually soak through. And you just got to let it sit. And it will, and the water will eventually soak through the paint. Now, what to chip it? Now, I mean, you, there's various ways to do it. Toothpicks work, but they don't last very long because they get wet, so they disintegrate. Um, a stiff brush will work, depending on how you, how much you want to do. And it really, it really depends on how much chipping you want. In this particular case, I don't want a lot because I want the, uh, the, the flames and stuff to survive. Um, So I'm going to actually use just a piece of sprue. Um, anything that you can scrape it up with metal, but I think that's a little too rough, and the plastic will get the job done um, quite nicely. So let's see how we got here. More water, a little more soaking. And the longer you wait, as long as you keep it wet, so it continuously soaks through, um, the better off you'll be. And the more control you'll have over it, and the less work you have to do. There you go, now we're getting pretty good. So, I'm just going to take the pointy tip here of the um, screw and just start doing some scratches and get the edges here. Everywhere. Top of the rivets. There we go. Now we got it good. And we got a good soaking through here. The paint just kind of comes off. You kind of have to keep. Now, one thing is, you know, since you are actually removing actual paint, you're going to have uh, paint chips going everywhere. So you really kind of. This is actually a pretty messy process between the water and the paint going everywhere. Since this is the front of the truck, we're going to put quite a few scratches of it kind of going as if things are hitting it and bouncing off. Setting all the edges here. And because of the layer of varnish, um, any of the paint that you did underneath the varnish should not be affected. And I don't want to do a whole lot of scraping on this simply because I want it to remain mostly color. But you could really take this to whatever level or extreme amount of chipping that you want. Um, just depending on how you want the model to look and you know what's going to be underneath it. And see how really stark the uh, contrast is between the, um, the red and the black metallic underneath. And the main reason for doing this one, it's easy, and you don't have to worry about actually any sort of detail work for painting the chips. But it also actually produces some very realistic um, effects, not only in this, the depth, so the chips actually have a physical depth to them, as in the, the level of the paint. So the thicker the paint, the actual more you'll get out of it, as far as that goes. And just constantly keep it wet and make sure you clean off all the extra chips too. Otherwise, when it dries, it'll just dry in place, and you don't really want that. 
So that's the basics of the hairspray chipping effect. I'm going to work on the bumper. And this is probably what I want to be the heaviest chipped, is the bumper itself. See, it's been soaking for a while, and it's just kind of, the paint just kind of falls off. It's starting to dry here. Also, I have to get underneath. So, bumper specifically, I want nice and heavily chipped. And I'm doing a straight line, it's kind of like something bouncing off of it, like it was running through something. Framing's still not that great. That's looking really good. And then, important thing is to wash up all the extra bits of paint. And you don't really, and if you have some lint free, lint free like paper towels or stuff, then you can use those to kind of dry it off. Um, but if you don't have anything that's lint free, I would not um, try drying off the water because the lint will stick to it. The paint is actually gets kind of gooey, um, especially so. And you definitely want to do this in sections because you don't want to be like grabbing where you've already chipped while you're doing other parts of the model. So you want to kind of let the stuff sit back up before you go on to the next stage. And then once everything dries, the, the uh, hairspray will become solid again. The paint will have a nice solid adhesion back to the hairspray. And then with the final varnish, it should be protected from any further damage. That's looking really, really good. See, after you're in here, you have some actual paint chips sitting on the black paint. So you want to make sure you get all those washed off with your brush. So you don't want any of those paint chips left over because it will screw it up and they'll look funny and um, they'll be really hard to clean off. So yeah, that's it for the paint chipping method or the hairspray method of doing the paint chips. Um, I said it's not so much you can, and if you have a really rusty effect underneath, it's really even better. Uh, if you go back and look at my uh, dragster battle wagon, it's done that way. But again, that's one a great example of trying to uh, do rust in a red paint job at the same time. It just doesn't really work out very well. In front of the bumper here, even more. You can see the paint chips, and even on my hand, the actual paint. So getting all those paint chips off of everything is really important when you're doing this. So just kind of like grab a brush, clean off with some fresh water, clean off those paint chips, those paint chips off onto a paper towel. And I said this stuff will go everywhere while you're working on it. I mean, in the background here the stuff everywhere as I'm working on it so trying to get these paint chips off so that's the basics of the hairspray method for chipping paint so what I'm going to do is go over and I'm going to complete all the chipping I want on the model which isn't going to be very much and then it has to dry I would dry let it just sit for no less than 24 hours to make sure that everything is cured back up again which will give us an opportunity to do um, the crew which is what we haven't started yet uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and finish the chipping on the paint, and then we can get started on the crew. Okay, so I've gone ahead and completed all the chipping that I want to on this particular model. I said it's not very heavy, but it's this, but it is obvious. Um, you can see it's still wet in places. So basically, all this chipping was done as if things were hitting it from the front. So, like right here on this curved piece, I kind of stayed to the, cur the curve and not so much the back of it. Um, right here, this, this little flat part here got pretty heavily hit. Um, same with the, the window grill got pretty heavily hit. But everything just kind of streaked front to back as if it's been running through bushes and trees and getting hit by rocks that are flying up and stuff like that as it's been moving forward. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how the chipping came out. And the contrast between the red and the dark metal is exactly what I was expecting. So we're going to go into the crew for the next step. While this is drying, I said we probably want to leave that dry for at least 24 hours to make sure everything's cured up. So we're going to take care of the crew. 
Uh, so these are going to be the base colors I'm going to use. The clothing is going to be done in Morton Fang Brown. All the metals are going to be done in Lead Belcher. Uh, skin is going to be done in Goblin Green. And then straps are going to be done in Cantor Blue. Uh, again, to match the shooter boys that go with the truck. Um, so I got the, the gunner, the driver, and their heads. Um, so I'm probably not going to bore you on camera with going through and, and just doing base coats on the crew. But after I get all the base colors done and fully painted, I'm just going to paint the, hit the entire models with Agrize Earthshade. So and then we'll go up to um, toning and layering up the skin um, after the wash is dry. So we'll be back for that. So I'm going to do a lot of painting here off camera and I'll see you when that's done. Okay, so I've gotten to the point where the crew members are base coated and washed in Agrize Earthshade. Uh, so just right over here, I mean, pretty much the... Uh, the models all painted up as we're going, as far as we're going to go. We are going to do some more layering on the skin. Uh, but first, you notice how everything is nice and brown here on the skin. So what we're going to do is we're going to restore the green color to it. I'm going to use it to do that with Way Watcher Green Glaze. Uh, now this isn't the wash; this is a glaze. Um, there's quite a bit of difference um, between glazes and washes, or I didn't say quite a bit. But there is a difference. Um, usually, washes contain an extra material that's designed to break up the surface tension and allow the wash to run down into the recesses. Um, glaze is usually just really thin color. So the idea here is that we use the glaze to alter the color back to a nice green. Just like that. And when it dries, it will be a very nice color, shade of green with some really nice shadows in it from the agrizer Earth Shade. And I think I found that this technique really does give you a better result than just washing it with the uh, Beltan Green over the, the base color. Because it just doesn't, I don't think the Beltan Green gives enough of a, of a shade for it to be really useful. So we're going to go ahead and go over this step and let them dry, and then we're going to go back to the truck chassis. Okay, so the truck is pretty much dried, uh, and uh, what we're going to do is just give it some final highlights here. Uh, the two colors we're going to be using are Troll Slayer Orange and Chainmail, or whatever the current equivalent is on that. And we're just basically going to go over and do this, some edge highlighting of these two colors. We're going to use the uh, Chainmail wherever there's metal showing, and we're going to use the Troll Slayer Orange wherever there's um, red showing. I'm just going to use the edge of the brush here and just, uh, we're not going to do a full edge highlight on everywhere, just some of the highlights, the high spots. Just like that. not a whole lot of red here to really do on the edges to do the highlight with. Most of the edges are pretty well chipped up here. So I'm going to go through here again, um, go over the what little areas there are to do here. And then uh, that's why I'll finish up the truck body. And then there's just a little couple of little things up, details up to pick out on the truck body itself. Um, I'm going to be doing the headlights, which you normally won't have to deal with. So I'm just going to paint them. Um, what's that color? Then up stone and give a highlight of white. Um, I'm going to paint the radiator hose black. And then I'm going to go and pick out some of the details on the dashboard. Um, and then the truck body. Once all that's done, the truck body will pretty much be done. So I'll go ahead and get this done and. Um, We'll be back to finish up the crew. Okay, so we've got the truck pretty much finished. I did the highlights, just kind of use the uh, chainmail as a glint. 
give the edges some shine. The headlights done and the control panel a basic paint job because you're really never going to see it. Um, and I also did some highlighting on the, some of uh, the chain mail on the wheels to give them a little bit of edge. Uh, so yeah, so we're in really good shape here. We just need to finish up the crew at this point. So here is the dried crewman. And you can see the, the color on the skin has really changed from the brown to the green. Um, so we're just going to layer it up. Just gonna give it, I'm just going to go over the uh, basics here. And we're just going to use the same base color, the goblin green, and uh, pick out the highlights on the skin. Leaving all the uh, shadows intact. like you would with uh, any orc in your army. So basically here you can just want to use whatever technique you use for the skin on the rest of your orcs. Um, this is the way I do it and I'm going to be doing it going forward because I really like how the uh, shade turns out uh, with the combination of the aggress or shade and the uh, way you watch your green blaze. Also makes it easier because that way you don't have to use a separate wash color. So yeah, and then that's pretty much and we do on the uh, camera again. And when that dries, we use this final highlight of scorpion green. Again, they do have an equivalent color of that now. To give the skin one more highlight. Just kind of give it Some bad thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Then we got to go over and clean up the uh, do the red and yellow. Highlights with the Mephiston red and the sunshine, sunburst yellow over the uh, speed freak parts. And then that will pretty much finish up the crew. So we're going to get that done off camera. And when we get back, we'll be ready for the final assembly. Okay, so we're pretty much on the final assembly step here of the truck. Uh, so I got the heads glued on to the guys. So I just need to glue everything into place here. I'm going to figure out which way this goes. So this is all we got here. Now normally we could actually use plastic glue on this even though it's painted. As I said before, the uh, uh, paint is porous. So plastic glue will actually soak through the paint and melt the plastic on either side and glue things together. It takes a while for this to happen, um, but it does actually happen. But since I've got, but since because I have varnish on it underneath the red paint, I can't do that. So I have to use super glue. Um, so let's go through here. The only thing I really want to talk about on the assembly is the wheels. You put the wheels on. Um, you want the thing to sit flat, or at least not wobble. Right, and since there's lots of spikes, on here, you, can, you have to try and rotate the wheels to get to the point where the truck doesn't wobble. It's just on the spikes on the wheels. And that's actually pretty good. Yeah. You can just rotate the wheels until you get a nice solid sitting. And so I have to glue this on, glue the driver in, and glue this in. And then we'll pretty much be done. The glue will cure, and I have to give it a final varnish. I'm gonna hit it with some pigments, um, mainly on the wheels. Uh, so I'm gonna get it glued together and then um, varnish it. And I guess we'll be back at the t point where we uh, are ready to get the pigments done. And that will be the pigments, the pigments are done. That will be the final step on it. Okay, so we're finally on the very last step. So here is the truck. It's assembled, loose dried, varnished, the varnish secured. So we're just going to hit the hit it with some pigments to weather it a little bit more. 
Um, so we're going to use a little bit of tacky glue. I said I've used this before in other videos, but I'm going to just go over it again. This I'm going to use um, tacky glue as actually my setting solution. Um, because I find it, it actually, it may not be the perfect solution, but it does if you're playing with your models a lot, it's going to actually help prevent the pigments from rubbing off. So I'm going to do very thin, uh, a little bit of glue and water, a little bit of glue with lots of water. If you don't want it to be that much thinner or that much thicker than just water, just a little tiny bit of glue is all it takes to get the, keep the pigments on there. So I'm going to give it a quick mix. And then, uh, uh, the pigments I'm going to use, I'm going to use Vallejo Pigments Sienna Natural, which is a uh, close to an ochre color I use for the rest of my orc basin. I use that on the tires and wheels for dust. And we got burnt sienna, which we use for rust primarily on the exhaust pipe. So I'm going to get this tacky glue so it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to mix. Make sure it's all mixed in there really good. I'm going to start with the rust color. I'm going to get some pigments out of here. And the working surface. Here. Yeah, because I want it nice and rusty. I'm going to pretty much make this pretty heavily on here. I'm going to keep it on as if it's real. Rusty over time. And this one, and you can actually want to pile it on so it actually adds some thickness to it because the exhaust pipe is pretty rusty and, and have a very rough texture from that rust. I've never actually worked with the exhaust pipe before. And if you have different colors, of course, I do not, but if you mix up the, the rust color with some other stuff, um, you can get some very nice rust effects here with the pigments. So the main thing, though, I just want to pile on some thickness here to the actual. The actual pipe. A very nice texture as if it was actual rust. And when it dries, it'll be nice and rough. Okay. That's really the only rust I'm going to do on there. It's like a pet, some minor amount of rust here in a couple other places. I really wanted to, but light dusting here on the edges, and on top of the motor here. I don't think too much. First, it's going to take a while to dry, but that's fine. Just to get a little bit of variety here, and you don't really need a lot of rust on this one because we're not really going for a rusty model, we're just going for a weathered model, which is a little different. primarily used on the tires. Um, kind of, kind of want to get pretty thin because we want it to look like a dusting. That one will be where to grab it. I don't have anywhere to grab it now. So I'm just going to get a light, kind of almost like a wash and stuff. Very thin, very light, just enough to get some color on this thing. I'm going to spread some here, make it as if the tires have kicked it up. 
as they've been spinning. Light. And this will just kind of give you, like I said, it's been like it's been like the tires have been turning through up the dust. Or you can, if you're not doing a dusty desert world, you can do it in mud or whatever colors that would match your basing or and or train board, whichever way, or in my case, both. I'm just gonna a little bit, not too much up in here, just a little bit of a dusting. too much and then we'll let that dry and then um, that's all we're going to do for that and we'll go on to the uh, some final picks uh, when all the uh, pigments are finally dry <laughs> 